welcome to this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm your co-host, Keith Halperin, and this is Will Bernick, our co-host. Tell us about your shirt this week, Will. Gladly. Um, this is my Mark Leno shirt. I, I, I marched in Mark Leno, in Mark Le with Mark Leno in the Gay Pride Parade for the past three years. And now I'm going to march with him again, again this Sun tomorrow in, in, in this year's parade. Look for me on TV when you watch the parade. Excellent. Thank you very much, Will. Today we have a special program, as you can tell, uh, from a special location. And our guest is Hester Wagner. Uh, the subject of our uh, program today is autism, employment in the media sector. Hester, would you like to begin hey, with Will? So hi, my name is Hester Wagner, and I am the program director of media for the Futures Explored Practical Film and Media Workshops. Um, we are a partnership with Inclusion Films, uh, which was founded by Joey Travolta, um, and we also have a production company called Golden Hill Films. And I'm the director for all of them. <laughs> Thank you. Will, would you like to take it from here? I, I, I'd love, I'd be glad to. First question, tell us about the history of Inclusion Films Inclusion Films was founded by Joey Travolta um, around 2005-2006. Uh, um, Joey Travolta's background is both as a special ed teacher and a producer, actor, and director, and musician. Um, and he kind of combined those two interests. Um, he began by working with UCLA and USC students in Hollywood, hiring students that were in film school in his films. And he found that um, you know, students that were in school were learning the theory of everything but not the hands-on practical knowledge. Um, and then he was working on a film festival with his daughter, and a young man with autism approached him and asked him to help him make a movie. Um, and the result of that was called Normal People Scare Me, um, and it was a documentary. They're currently in production of Normal People Scare Me 2, T-O-O, -O, um, following up on the young man a number of years mm -hmm. later. Um, and so that kind of led Joey to start doing classes, um, teaching acting to individuals on the spectrum, which led to film camps. Um, every summer we travel around the country to do a number of film camps for individuals on the spectrum. Um, and that's how I got involved in it, which we'll talk more about later. Um, and then that led him to, to create the workshops. So we currently have workshops. Um, the first one was in Burbank. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have Bakersfield, Livermore, Sacramento, and one in Detroit, Michigan. So our workshops here in the Bay Area are a partnership with Futures Explored, which is a Bay Area nonprofit providing a number of services to individuals uh, across a wide range um, of disabilities. Uh, we do employment, volunteering, day programs, different things like that. So the film workshop is a partnership with Joey's program, Inclusion Films, and um, we teach practical filmmaking skills to individuals on the spectrum and with other disabilities. Oh, um. How did you get into, into to inclusion films? Um, I first got involved in 2008. I was living in Los Angeles, and a friend of mine got hired by Joey to work in the film camps. Um, and my background is in education and educational theater. Um, and so my friend introduced me to Joey, and I started in the film camps. I did the summer of 2008, and then we started our program in Bakersfield. Um, and so I was really interested in it, and I. Um, worked in the Bakersfield program for two years, and then we started here in the Bay Area in February of 2013, and I came down and moved here to run the programs here. Can you tell us about, can you tell us about some of your recent inclusion films? Yeah, so every semester, um, our workshops are broken into 20-week semesters, um, and students come five days a week from 10 to 3, um, and it's basically film school. So we teach um, acting, writing, directing, editing, lighting, camera, sound, prop making, wardrobe, the whole gamut of filmmaking. Um, and within a semester we'll have a number of student driven projects. Mm -hmm. So the students write, they direct, they act, they do from beginning to end, they do all the post production. Um, and then in the semesters we also do a thesis film, which is a bigger film. Our students write it, sometimes um, all as a group, sometimes individual students will write a film. Um, and then we produce it like a professional project. So we bring on professional cinematographers, professional editors, professional directors, professional actors, and our students work on the crew for those films. So within a semester, they get the opportunity to be the leads in the creative side, 
but also to get that practical experience of what jobs they're going to get when they actually graduate from the program and move into employment. Um, so since uh, coming to Livermore in Sacramento, we've made a total of five thesis films, I believe, and one documentary. Um, our most recent thesis film in Livermore was called Uno, and Uno um, is the story of a young man with autism and a man who is a veteran who's lost his leg in the Persian Gulf War. And the two of them kind of have an unlikely friendship um, that, that evolves uh, over the game of Uno um, and a mutual interest in the military. Um, so that film we made um, at the end of 2014, I believe, and right now we've premiered it locally here mm -hmm. and we're sending it off to festivals as we speak. Excellent. Yeah. Tell us about the goals you have for the inclusion films for employment. Once you've gone through the program and gained some skills, we work uh, with you to try to find employment opportunities. Um, Futures Explored is well set up for that because we have ways to do supported employment. Um, and so we, we look for internships, editing opportunities, jobs on mm -hmm. features or things that are shooting locally. Um, and then through Golden Hill Films, which is our production company, we also have projects where we get hired mm -hmm. as a production company. So in this last year, I think we've done about four, five, six maybe more paid projects. Um, so we have in-house opportunities and you know we're looking for how to grow that, how to find opportunities for our students and our graduates to work in the industry. Um, one of the challenges with that is the, the film and media industry is different than you know kind of a typical nine to five job, right? You get mm -hmm. hired for a project, then that project's over and you've got to think about what you're going to do next. So we're trying to work on how do we structure things to help our students fill the gaps in between jobs um, and find more consistent employment and how, how to do that. And then the workshop uh, is, is um, available to individuals who have a high school diploma, so 18 with a diploma, mm -hmm. or who are out of transition at the age of 22. Um, you can join earlier than that without a diploma if you private pay, but the regional center will fund either 18 with a diploma or 22 and out of transition once you enter the adult services world. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have an ending age. You can join us at any time in, time in your life. You can switch gears and, and become a filmmaker. Um, and then the other qualifications for entry for the program are an interest in film, mm -hmm. obviously. We want people who want to be there. Um, the ability to kind of commit to the whole thing. It's a pretty rigorous program. Um, and then the other thing is that we're not a behavioral program, so we're yeah. not really set up um, for behavioral services. Um, so, you know, just not having a whole lot of that. I understand that the program is for adults, and many of our viewers have been through training programs and schooling for adults, which have basically been, well, we'll put you through the program, off you go. I understand that your program is clearly not like that. Uh, what does the program do to help with the employment? How does it achieve it for our, your graduates? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, the, the, the training element of the program is certainly vocational, right? Mm -hmm. So we're providing you all of those skills. Um, I think one of the great things about this program too though is even if you don't go into the film and media industry, we do provide job development training throughout the program. Um, and that's, that's all the soft skills, how to interview, how to be in front of people, um, how to dress for work, mm -hmm. you know, so there, there is definitely an element of it that recognizes that, you know, the film and media industry is, is a tough one for anybody, mm -hmm. right? So, so are all 22 of our students going to follow that path each semester? Probably not, you know, um, so that's the reality of it. Uh, but one of the things that Futures Explored has, being a Bay Area nonprofit that's been in operation for over 50 years, is that we have a number of other programs that can do that follow-up piece. Um, supported employment has taken kind of a hit um, yes. in terms of funding over the last few years. Um, we continue to fight that on our advocacy side mm -hmm. um, and hope that that changes to where we get more of that in place. Um, but in the meantime, we still are committed to that supported employment element. Um, so Futures Explored has um, uses TDS, which is called Tailored Day Service, mm -hmm. um, and that's an opportunity for students to meet with a job coach um, to continue to gain specific skills as they've exited the, the media program, and it, it's not mm -hmm. just for that, it could be for anything. 
um, but they can do additional training, community college classes, um, and we provide them that support mm -hmm. to do that. Um, and then that's also job searching. So it can be meeting with your job coach to look up job opportunities, yeah. to submit your voiceover demo to you know, different jobs, um, and then to follow up when you get an audition to go to that voiceover audition, as one example. Um, so TDS is a great opportunity um, for us to provide follow-up support, and that mm -hmm. can be ongoing, you know. Um, and so one of the things that we talked about is you get a, you book a job, you're doing six weeks on a film, two days on a film, whatever it is. Um, that job ends, you come back to your TDS coach, you start to work towards that next opportunity. Yes. Um, you know, so that's one thing that we can offer. Um, you know, I personally want to see all of our students continue to get work. Um, our program is relatively new, so that's yes. just starting. We're just getting the first people out the door doing that. So it's still kind of, you know, feeling it out, seeing how it's going to work, finding those opportunities. Um, but over the next year, I'm really hoping that we can forge connections with other organizations like you guys, um, other Bay Area opportunities to partner, to, you know, build those connections. Um, one of the experiences that I've had is every time somebody does hire one of our students, mm -hmm. it, it always has, like, it historically has had a positive result. And so, and I think that that's true for kind of this larger idea of um, individuals with disabilities, individuals on the spectrum who are coming out to the workforce. Um, once somebody sees, oh, that's what this individual can do, here are the abilities that this individual has, they're, they're like, oh, great, yeah, bring yeah. them in. This is, you know, I can't tell you how many times I hear they're the best worker that we have. You know, they show up on time and they do the work and they're committed and they follow through. So once we can, can kind of educate the larger community as a whole to recognize that mm -hmm. and respond to it, I think that the opportunities are really going to grow. Um, so, you know, it's, it's building those connections. It's, it's meeting with production houses in the Bay Area and saying, give our guys a chance and then... That you know, I think that the word of mouth is going to really work, and you know all those things. So, I'm really confident. Um, I'm really obviously committed to to helping our students um, continue on their goals and dreams. And you know, um, I think the other thing that's really going to help with that is the more films that we make, and the more we get yes. them out there into festivals, and people see what we're doing, and we're still educating even within our community, mm -hmm. kind of what we're about and what, what opportunities there are. Um, and so as that kind of awareness grows and as people go like, wow, <laughs> you know, um, which is more often than not the reaction I get. Like, you know, people will come work on our set, professionals will come mm -hmm. in that we hire. Um, everybody always says this is the most fun I've ever had on a film set. You guys are great to work with. You're so professional. Um, and I love being the director of the program. You know, when we first started, I, I had my hands in the pot a lot more, and now my students are so gifted and talented mm -hmm. that most of the time I'm like, all right, you guys got it. I'm just going to be sitting over here hanging out, because <laughs> they're doing it. That's they're, what you, you know, an absolute professional film crew. So, um, yeah, so I, I think I, once the world is aware of that, we're going to be in a good place. Really good. Yeah. It sounds like you clearly walk the talk. They yeah. try. Good to you. One last oh. thing along those lines. Sure. You mentioned that uh, the industry is a very spotty employment picture for anybody. Absolutely. How do your graduates deal with the downtime, which happens to anyone? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that that's, that's something that we're, we're still exploring exactly how that can work. Um, you know, one of the things with TDS, like I was talking mm -hmm. about, is we can still be doing this, we can be supporting the searching, right? Um, we can be encouraging our students to continue professional development. Um, but I do think that the reality is going to come where, just like everybody who's trying to make it in, in a creative field, mm -hmm. that there may be a job job, which is, you know, what you would yeah. your job job. Um, so, you know, is that a reality for some of our guys? I'm, I'm sure it will be, you know, and we can, we can commit to, okay, well, maybe you're working, you know, in an office three days a week um, and, you know, doing reception work or doing administrative mm -hmm. or data entry, whatever it is, or at a restaurant, or, you know, um, that, that might be a reality for some of our guys, which is why we're committed to providing the soft skills as well as the creative, technical, mm -hmm. film-related skills. Because then if you do have to get your job job, you can go and do that and then still be looking for your creative work and balancing that until, you know, we have 
a group of Martin Scorsese's out there making the millions. Excellent. Will? Yeah. Yeah. Last question. Where is this program going in the future? I, you know, hopefully into, hopefully it will be international and everywhere. My dream is that the workshop will be in every city, in every <laughs> state. Um, no, but seriously, um, I did just meet with a, a doctor from Turkey last mm -hmm. week who is looking to expand services. You know, we, we kind of always think like, okay, California, we're doing what we're doing, and that's great. But every state in this country and every country in the world has this kind of um, situation right now where we have adults on the spectrum and the mm -hmm. unemployment rate is so high. That's everywhere. So what can we do internationally? Um, you know, I'd love to expand our program. We've talked about doing it in Hawaii, South Carolina. Um, they're, they're maybe going to model it in Turkey. You know, so can we grow that? That's one thing. Um, personally, I would like to see us maybe expand in the Bay Area to have more than one location. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the challenges, to be completely honest, in our program being in Livermore yes. is serving the whole Bay Area with transportation. Until the BART is all the way into Livermore, that's a challenge. So, you know, could we expand to have something that was more in the North Bay, you know, I don't know, um, Berkeley or Concord or somewhere that where people could access it, that would be really great. Um, I would love to see us having a fully operational, doing work all the time production company where we've got mm -hmm. the phone ringing off the hook and we're doing paid projects and we're making films and we're out there. Um, I'd love to expand our program. This is kind of my personal thing to where we have an entire performing arts kind of university um, ac academy type mm -hmm. setup, maybe, you know, where we've got the classes in film, but we're doing theater, we're doing visual arts, and we've got a performance space and a premiere space and a studio space, and we're booking it out. And, you know, I got dreams. I want to do it all. Okay. I think the last thing is uh, if we have some angels out there who would love to help you. What would be the top things on, on your wish list? So yeah, if there's somebody out there looking for a way that you can involve our program, one thing would be hire us if you've got a project. Um, we can do PSAs, promotional videos, commercials, um, interview segments, voiceovers, whatever you might need. Um, whether you're a medical facility that needs a demo video, you know, or a, a new organization that needs a video on the website, hire us. Um, uh, you know, and then we're, we're always after, um, you know, opportunities for, for donations. Um, In-kind donations are great. Equipment, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we, we all understand that all this equipment in the room, it's expensive. Um, and so for us to build that would be really great, to have, you know, more opportunities to do professional projects um, would be great if we could build our, our repertoire of equipment. Um, you know, and uh, one thing I'd love to do is be able to scholarship students mm -hmm. um, into the program. You know, we do occasionally come up with someone's not a regional center client and they can't get that funding. They'd love to do the program and they can't afford it. I'd love to have a scholarship opportunity um, to provide for our students. Um, um, so to find out more about the Futures Explored Practical Film and Media Workshops in the Bay Area, you would go to www.futures explored.org and there's a film workshop button on the left. To find out how to hire us to do productions, you would go to www.goldenhillfilms.com um, and you can email uh, your case manager to join the workshop. You can email me. My email is hesterwagner at futures-explored.org. If you would like to see more about us um, in the social media world, you can check us out on Facebook under the Futures Explored Film Workshop, or check out our YouTube, YouTube page, which is also um, Futures Explored Practical Film and Media Workshop. We're rolling. All right, Elliot, interview you see me. Okay, the first one is a detailed description of your job position. What's your job here at the Futures Explored Film and Media Workshop? So my job here at the, at the, at the, at the Futures, Futures my, my job here at the Futures Explored Film and Media Workshop is the I'm an assistant editor and classroom aide. So when I, I, I do a lot of I do uh, a lot of sort of the commercial editing jobs that we get. Um, when you first
first came here, I heard that you didn't quite believe in yourself at first. And can you talk a little bit about that and how um, that changed when you were introduced to filmmaking and working with other people? So, before I ever did an inclusion film pro program like the film camps, I really didn't believe in myself because I'd been taught from a very young age that I, I needed help to do things and that, you know, I, I wasn't able to do things by myself and, you know, it was, it was just kind of a disaster. I just, to me, it was, I just didn't think I could do things by myself. I didn't think I would ever be able to hold a job. I didn't think I was ever going to be able to, you know, live on my own. I thought that I was just going to be, you know, living in a group home with the pop the side for the rest of my life. But when I first came to this program, they taught me, you know, how to, they told, they, they, they just said no. They said, just, just said no, you know, just, just do it. And so they, they, you know, they taught me how to, you know, do the various jobs in filmmaking. And then uh, they let me do it, and I was able to do it by myself, which felt great, because I was able to actually do things. I didn't need the help from other people to do it. And I started to build my self-confidence up, and now, now I'm able to hold my own job, and I'm looking to eventually move out of my, my parents' house, too. Great. And the last one was, um, I would talk about your career goals. For my career goals, I would like, there's a few things I want. I mean, obviously for the next many years, I'd really like to be working here, and I really want to move up to, move up in this, in this program and, so I can continue to help our, uh, help, help the students and I just really love it here. It's like the perfect job. Everyone's friendly and everyone's up. Uh, everyone's friendly and they all care about the same things I do. And I, I really want to keep, you know, working up here. But eventually, I'd also like to, you know, do some some jobs on film sets as well. Maybe some script supervising, editing, uh, uh, and then obviously a more of a pipe dream would be able to write as well for film. Anything else you'd like to add from your previous interview that you thought was awesome stuff that I don't have the questions for? Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say this, this program has completely changed my life. Before it, I just didn't think I was going anywhere. Because of this, this program really saved my life. With, with you know, Hester and Joey and everyone, just without, without this program, I, don't, I, don't, I think I'd still be sitting at home doing nothing. And I have a very bleak life. That's good. Okay. All right. Cut. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, do you have any final things, Will? Um, thank you. Thank you for being with us today. We we can't wait to see some of your inclusion films. Thank you. Thank you. And I know it's my standard uh, farewell, but I know we're going to see a lot more from you and your organization. I so thank you very much, Hester Absolutely. Wagner. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Hester Wagner of Futures Explored. Um, for Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum, I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. Have a great week. Tune in, tune in next week. <laughs>